Hi everyone. Um, my hot take on the grading policy for Markham Period 4 and where we're going. Um, I'm glad that we, we pretty much finished the curriculum this year. I mean, we did it in the best way that we could. Um, you know, I would like for you to have done Chapter 19 on Nuclear Chem and Chapter 22 on Organic Chem as a self-study, but I'm, I'm not going to require it. Um, what I'm going to do moving forward is I'm going to post all of the review materials and give you a link where you can see some videos. Uh, there are some AP teachers that are reviewing the material based upon the units. Um, as far as the grade goes for Markham Period 4, my original plan, because this is what they were considering originally, was that this, the floor on the grades was going to be a 93. And that you could override the grade higher, which I had agreed with that. You know, there are some legal um, implications. There are some issues with students who have the coronavirus, whose family members have the coronavirus, or whose family members work in the medical field or in first responders or as police officers um, who may get exposed to the virus. And so the 93 was designed in an effort for equity to be fair to all students. And then they decided that the 93 was not just the uh, floor, that you couldn't override it. And I was in favor of overriding it to a higher grade. That if you had a 92, for instance, for the year, you would just need a, or for the first three marking periods, you would need a 95 to, ra I'm sorry, 96 to raise your grade up to a 93 for the year. Now that's not possible. Everyone gets a 93. They've made it the floor and the ceiling. You can't get higher than a 93 for the fourth marking period. So what is your motivation then? to try to do well, because as long as you pass, you get a 93. And everything, for instance, the meeting that I had today was we tried to get some clarification as teachers as to what that meant as far as passing. And the response was that they want to be flexible and so we really don't have a criteria for what is passing. But what one person had said was that you have to prove that the student failed. So what I'm going to do is post all the review materials that I would normally collect. And how many of them that you have to do in order to pass, I have no idea. Um, I would love to tell you 65%, but then they said we couldn't use that number. We couldn't use 75%. Um, we should give tests and give feedback, but we can't use the test grades to determine pass fail. So I'm I'm really at a loss as to what to do because this is so against my educational philosophy. You know, I hate keeping score to begin with. And for me, keeping score is something I have to do, not something I want to do. But the one thing that I feel that grades do for certain kids is that it motivates them to study and to do well. And without that motivating factor of the reward of the grade, it's hard to get them to put forth their best effort. So I don't have any other solution to motivate you to give your best effort. For instance, I would say, okay, well, you know, you want to do a good job on this AP exam. But the truth of the matter is a lot of schools have already bailed out of giving credit for the AP tests um, prior to this year. And the ones that remain, uh, you know, I, I have to imagine are going to be pretty cynical about the grade. It's uh, the FRQ section of 45 minutes. And I know for AP bio Biology, it's two FRQ questions. I don't know how many it is for AP Chem. But certainly trying to test two semesters of college chemistry in 45 minutes is pretty much downright impossible. And the fact that the test is given online opens itself up to a variety of creative ways of cheating. I think I know how they'll try to combat that. They'll try to create questions from data and, uh, you know, novel questions that will ask about, like, for instance, the question might be in 10 parts, and those 10 parts might, uh, uh, you know, where you take the data and apply it to various parts of the curriculum. 
But I don't know how they'll do that. And I have to think that colleges are going to be fairly cynical of the AP test scores. I have to think that uh, colleges are going to be fairly cynical of the grades for this year because the school shut down. And, you know, I know, for instance, what my wife is going to tell her AP biology students is, is look, especially if you're a senior, if you don't want to take this, get your $90 back. Um, there's no sense in wasting $90 on this thing. But I, I know a lot of you, the juniors and sophomores, can't really do that. So you have to do the best you can and I guess hope that that one 45-minute question is the thing that you know. Um, so I imagine there are going to be some really high grades on the AP exam. There are going to be some really low grades, and I'm not so sure they're indicative of the overall grading. And for me, you know, school is always about not so much the grade and the AP grade, but the, the process and the journey that you're trying to learn uh, how to learn and you're and trying to learn how to think. Um, motivation plays a big part of that. And, and I really feel like the motivating factor has just been cut out from under me for the fourth marking period. So I'm going to publish some information about preparing for the AP exam and try to come up with a criteria for pass versus fail and another criteria on what I think you should do to get ready for the AP exam. Um, but again, I, I have to believe that some of these things are going to be taken with cynicism, for instance, a, a person with a 92 right now cannot get a 93. And statistically, I don't consider an A-92 minus to be any different than a 93A, but that is not possible. But if you have a 67% right now, then you get a 93 for the fourth marking period, and that brings you up to a 73. So you go from a D to a C, a full letter grade higher. Um, to me... I, I, I don't, I mean, I do understand the legalities of what's going on, but I, I don't understand why they, they put a, a limit on the 93 and why they didn't allow us to override it. And I, I, I know it has to do with complaints and about teachers um, dealing with that sort of thing. But I, I will tell you, the biggest thing that keep coming up is the cheating on online. They don't want to go over 93 because of the cheating. And, and I couldn't argue that today because... You know, to be quite honest, on the chapter 17, only 60% of you completed the online assignment on time before the test, and only 62% of you saw the videos. But yet, 90% of you scored an A or an A minus. Go figure. How is that possible? And the average amount of time to take the test was 48 minutes. It took me 53 minutes to take the test. So on average, I am slower than all of you, even though I know a lot more of this stuff than you do. So I have to believe there's quite a bit of cheating going on with the online things. I knew it going in. I was trying to come up with ways of trying to curtail it a little bit. Um, I, but I can tell there are people who didn't cheat because there are people who had A's who suddenly now with the online testing and and reached out to me to complain that they're having trouble getting B's, B pluses, A minuses. And then I've had kids who rarely got a B or higher who haven't missed a single question since we went to the online testing. So, you know, it, it's hard to justify even counting any of the fourth market period grade when there's, there's so much cheating out there. But it is what it is. There are more important things in life, like staying safe and being healthy, and I agree with all that. Life will go on, um, and we're in a fairly good position because we did complete the curriculum, and I'm glad that we were able to at least get that in, even though for some people, the last three chapters were, were pretty superficial for them. So, uh, attendance, you don't have to email me, although I did like your little emails and responding back to them. But you certainly don't have to send an email anymore for attendance. If you're absent, they said to just have your parents call the school and let them know that you're absent. Now, why you would admit that you're absent if you're homesick, I don't understand that, but that's the policy. And as far as turning in the work, like I said, I'll publish something and give you a criteria for the fourth marking period. Right? Now, do understand I had no part of this decision. And 
I considered cheating on it, but I don't think that my going against uh, a district-wide directive, one, sends a good message to you uh, about honesty and integrity, and, and two, um, you know, you have to understand in life that when there's when you're faced with things that you don't agree with, you have two choices. You can either compromise for the better good, or you can hold fast to your beliefs and be stubborn. And I think that you hold fast when you can, but you compromise when you must. And the truth of the matter is I'm not willing to override grades above a 93, not because of philosophy, but because I can't endure the censorship. I mean, I don't know what type of rebuke I would receive from the administration for going against a directive, first of all, and two, going against a directive on something I obviously understood. And uh, so I want you to understand that all of this goes against my philosophy, but I do understand the ramifications of it, and I do understand why it's being done for the better good. So uh, the only thing I can say to you is do the best you can, and do understand that the uh, the work you're putting in now will reap benefits later on in college. I just can't reward you with those benefits now. If you have any emails or questions or any questions about it, rather, just email me and I'll try to articulate an answer the best I can. Thank you very much.